Hi guys and welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Ginny and as always I thank you very much for choosing to spend some time with me. This week I will be talking to you about the Tina Gibbons pant pattern called the Juliet. A picture of it here. Uh, for some reason last week when I was talking about this I kept calling it the Lizette which is a completely different pattern. In fact I think it's a top. But anyways um, this is the Juliet. It is a drop crotch sort of cropped pant. Um, I know that the drop crotch thing, the big balloony pant thing, isn't for everybody. So I do have a little bit of a tutorial later in the video um, and I'll leave timestamps for you below. That tutorial is really about making this corrugated pocket. So if you're interested in that, just fast forward to that part. If you're not interested in that either, um, just be sure to come back next week when I will be talking to you guys about leggings. I'm doing a couple of tests on different patterns and I'll also be doing several fabric tests. So I should have um, a, a topic with a little bit more broader range next week. In any case, let's get on with the Juliet pant for now. I made these twice this week. Um, this first pair here is in the green cloud linen from Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. I really liked this linen, let me just say that up front. The linen is lovely. Um, I also want to point out here that I am wearing this with a Tina Gibbons Zelda slip. Um, and after I said last week that I wasn't really into ruffles, I immediately turned off my camera and went and put a ruffle on this dress. <laughs> Which is silly. Um, I I did that because I had it without the ruffle. And I just felt like it wasn't finished. So I put a ruffle on it and I'm much happier with it. I made it specifically to go with these pants. Um, so the pants are in the cloud linen from Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. It sewed like a dream. Um, it, I have nothing bad to say about this linen. I really liked it. However, this first pattern, this first green pair is uh is in that linen i made the size extra small in this and when i measured the pattern pieces now let me just say i couldn't find a seam allowance written anywhere i may have missed it or it might not be there i use five eighths inch seam allowances on these pants because i believe that tina's pander patterns usually have five eighths inch seam allowance in any case i measured my pattern pieces using a five eighths inch seam allowance the extra small came up at the waist at 44 inches, which is good. My hips are 40 inches, so that's plenty to get over my my hips. It does add a little extra baggage around your waist, but in a pant like this, that's to be expected anyway. So I went ahead and cut the extra small. However, with all the pressing and everything I did, by the time I went to put the waistband on, <laughs> the waist of these pants had actually stretched to 50 inches. <laughs> now, I'm not gonna blame that on the fabric. I think it's actually because these pants have a fair amount of bias in them. Both the front and the back panels have a slight curve, which is obviously bias. The waistband is a curve, so that is bias. Um, the hemline is, the hems are also, have a little curve, so those are on the bias. And of course, this curved, big curved crotch seam is all on the bias. So if you're making these pants, regardless of what fabric you want to use, I highly recommend stay stitching the waistline on all the pieces, the hemline on all the pieces, and that giant curved crotch seam on the front and the back. Um, in this first pair, uh, the green ones, I just, I just cut them straight as the pattern says. Because they came out at 50 inches after I was done with all my pressing and sewing, I folded them right sides together and took two inches off of each side and that seemed to be fine. Now, I will say, the uh, originally I put the waistband, the pattern piece for the waistband, it looks like this. I used this for the original waist. However, um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I've added a little tissue here. It's about a half an inch. This pattern piece is only one and a half inches from top to bottom. Obviously, you're not gonna be able to use a 5 8 inch seam allowance. You cut four of these, one for the front, one for the back, and then 
and inner waistband front and back. That means that you have a seam allowance here at the bottom and also at the top. In order to get a one inch wide elastic in there, you can only use a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you're going to use this pattern piece, um, I highly recommend adding some length to it so you can have bigger than a quarter inch seam allowance at the top and the bottom. I feel like a quarter of an inch is too small, for, especially for a waistband that gets a lot of activity. The alternative is to use, you could use 3 8 inch seam allowances on the original piece and use a 3 quarter inch elastic. I almost always use 1 inch elastic in my waistbands just because I have a ton of it <laughs> and I'm not interested in buying like more elastic for one pair of pants so I just made mine bigger. Okay the other thing is you can see that this is a curved waistband. That means that when you get to this edge, you're going to fold this, you're going to have two seam allowances meeting here, two seam allowances meeting here. It's really, really bulky. Um, and additionally, usually you use a curved waistband to make something lay flat around the waist, get a nice flat fit around the waist. But you, it, it's an elastic waist pant, so it's not going to do that anyway. Um, I guess the the other thing is, I suppose that because it's curved, this is going to be smaller than this, obviously. But to my mind, it just made more sense to make the pants smaller at the top if you wanted to and just use a straight waistband, which is what I did. All that is to say, I used this originally. I was really unhappy with it. It was very bulky. It was very fiddly. It was a lot of work for a very disappointing result. I tossed this out and just cut a straight waistband and put that on and folded it over much less bulky easier to put together and and a better result at the end of the day okay the other thing is um let's see what was i going to say the other thing is this pocket which i really like i'll show you a close-up of the pocket here um now the original pocket, it's supposed to be a corrugated pocket so it like has a top and a bottom and it like folds in on itself and you have like a fold that goes all the way around the pocket, which is a very cute idea. I like these really oversized pockets. I think they're really cute. Um, however, in the instructions that the gusset you use to make that side panel is one straight piece of fabric. There are a couple of problems with that. A, it doesn't fold in on itself nicely. It um, it's, I think it just looks clunky at the corner. Additionally, when you sew this straight band, it's it's not hard to sew it onto the pocket, but it is hard to get it to, hard to sew it onto the actual pant and have it look nice because you're, you fold it under an edge and you're trying to stitch it down a straight piece in a curve. Anyways, so I did a quick tutorial on how I made the second pocket and that is, um, this white pair here. I also added trim around this pocket and I spent a lot of time making these pants. I did a lot of hand stitching like uh, just running stitches for my um, for my top stitching on the seams. So anyways, so here's my tutorial on how I made what I think is a nicer looking corrugated pocket. Before I go to the video, let me just say that for some reason my um, camera was like picking up every single bit of noise this week, so it seems a little loud. You may want to turn your TV down. I tried to alter it a little bit in editing, but just beware. Also, it cuts off pretty quickly because I wanted to talk about the waistband, but I just did that just now, so it just ends at the end of the pocket, okay? All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is either the front or the back of our Juliet pants. We have them both assembled at this point. So that you have a center panel and two side panels on the front and the exact same thing on the back. So let's move on to our pockets. If you're going to use, if you're going to put the patch pockets on the back, go ahead and do that now also. So we're going to move on to our pocket piece, which looks like this. This is the main pocket piece and then you have a um, front pocket facing that goes here and I don't have this piece anymore because I used it for something else but 
you should also have a long straight strip of fabric, something like this, that gets sewn around this edge, right around here. And this turns into your, and then this edge gets sewn down to your pant and it folds in ah, like that, right? All the way around. So here is the problem. That, that piece is fine, um, but that means that your gusset is never going to lay flat. It's going to look like this here. This is the gusset piece. It's straight all the way down. And you can see right here, because you're putting a straight edge, which is fine. There's nothing majorly wrong with that. I decided I would like to get it to lay a little flatter. So for mine, I am going to take my pocket piece. So I'm really just going to trace this corner here. Because these this edge and this edge are both straight edges. So I'm just going to make a mark right here where it ends. I should trace that there. And then trace this side up just a couple of inches as well. Okay. So, so the original gusset piece is about two inches deep altogether. So from this side to this side, it's about two inches. That means we need each side to be finished about one inch. Um, that means that uh, let's make a mark at our five eighths of an inch here. Our seam allowance along here is five eighths of an inch. So that's our five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then we want this piece to be an inch. So that's there. And then we want another five eighths inch seam allowance over here which puts us right there. And that means it looks like our total piece should be two and three eighths inches. So that's what we're gonna cut this at, two and three eighths inches. I apologize for the white on white, two and three eighths. I can't even see it. So this is gonna be our new gusset um, pattern piece. Just like that, we're gonna cut that out. So let's just double check and make sure this is gonna fit on our pattern properly. It should match up there, and there, and that looks good. It does, except that I think I cut my um, pocket not quite straight. Okay, so that's good. Now we need to cut two pairs of these. Okay, now, so we should have at this point two uh, facing pieces, two pocket pieces, and four of these gusset shape pieces, these l shape pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is attach our facing to our pocket, and it's just going to go right sides together, just exactly like this. I have already finished the edges on this, sorry, the long side. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and attach this uh, facing piece to each pocket. Um, once I've done that, I'm going to press the seam allowance towards the facing and I'm going to understitch right along that seam. Okay, that is our pocket so far. You can see I added some bias trim to the opening edges of my pockets. I just did that by um, laying a flat piece of bias in between the two layers and stitching it down when I put my facing on. Um, I did want to say that I told you guys to search this long edge of your facing. This edge right here too also needs to be searched because this is also going to be raw when you're done. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our gusset pieces. Okay, I really like the way this bias trim looks on here, so I'm going to add it around this edge too. And I'm gonna show you really quickly how I do that. So my seam allowance here is 5 eighths of an inch. My trim is uh, 3 quarters of an inch, it doesn't really matter. I just know that my seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch and I want a quarter of an inch showing. So 5 eighths and a quarter is 7 eighths. That means my trim, my folded edge, needs to be laying 7 eighths of an inch away from the raw edge of my fabric. So I'm just going to measure that as I go.
Okay, I've gone ahead and pinned my trim all the way around the edge and I have double checked to make sure that the outside edge of my trim is seven eighths of an inch away from my bra edge. If you want, that's to get a quarter of an inch to show. If you want more than that to show, you're just gonna need to move this over according to how much you want to show. In okay. any case, double check it to be sure that your trim is seven eighths of an is the right distance <laughs> away from the raw edge the whole way around especially down here at the curve where it's a little harder and you can see that i put a lot more pins there okay once you've got that done we're just going to base this down and it's going to look like this you can see I should have a quarter of an inch sticking out this whole way. Now we're gonna to move to our gusset piece and you're gonna put your two pieces together, just like this, right sides together. And you're going to sew this inside curve and then you're gonna finish it. But you don't wanna press it or anything. So when we're done, this is my pocket. This is my gusset piece. It sits in here like this. So the piece, the side that goes against your pants, not the side that you're sewing to your pocket, but the side you're going to sew to your pants, you're going to want to finish that edge now too. So that's this edge right along here. Now we're going to open this up and we're going to put the right sides together. You can see how that's, this is the piece that's going to go get against the pants in a minute. And we're going to pin this down. Now, if you are not putting trim in yours, you can just pin this together, stitch it, and press it open. If you're using trim, like I did, it's best if you can sew it from this side. That way you can follow your basing stitch right the way around your pocket piece and you won't get your, um, your trim messed up as you go you'll you'll be sure you're hitting your trim exactly where you want it to be so that's what i'm going to do and then i will come back okay this is what our pocket looks like right now after you've done that um, you're going to edge stitch along this edge if you have trim or if you don't have trim it doesn't matter just edge stitch along this total edge around here make sure you're not catching this other side of your gusset in that and I will point out that even after all my measuring and care, you can see my bias trim looks pretty good up into here, and then it gets pretty skinny, and then it gets better again. So, you know, I've done it twice. I'm going to live with it, but just be careful because what happens is your bias trim stretches and shifts and whatnot. So, anyways, the other one looks better, but it doesn't really matter. It's fine. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lay it flat like this. So your gusset is laying like this. You've got that crease in the middle. That's the back side of your gusset. We're just going to trace right along the edge of our pocket with chalk or erasable pen or whatever you have. Okay, once you have that done, you're going to lift up the outer side of your pocket and you're going to see that line all the way around. And we're going to use that. We're going to go to the iron and we're going to Flip this over right on that line and press it all the way around. Just be careful when you get around the curve. It's a little tricky, but it works. Just take your time. And when you're done with that, it will look like this. Then we're going to take our the front of our pant and we are going to line our pocket up, make sure it's laying flat, match this edge with the side of your pant and the top with the top edge of your pant like that. And now mine is oriented in the wrong direction, but you're going to, once you've got that down, you're going to lift this up and you're just going to pin right along this edge all the way around. You're going to go to the sewing machine and you're just going to stitch that down as close to that uh, fold as you can get it. All right, so that's our pockets on and almost finished. 
Um, now you're just going to, you see this big, your gusset here. I was like this. You're going to make sure that it's laying flat. And you're going to baste the top together and this side together. And it'll look like this. And it's pretty cool. Um, then the next thing we're going to do is um, just put our front and backs together. The rest of the assembly is pretty easy. You're going to sew your side seams and your crotch seam, and you're going to finish all of those. And then we're going to come back and talk a little bit about this waistband. Okay, so that is my corrugated pocket tutorial. I hope you guys found that helpful. I really do feel like it's uh it's a much nicer looking pocket i will say it's maybe a little more work um but with a much better result and so i feel like it was worth it and also i have to say it's so much easier to sew on to both the pocket and the pant when you have that curved gusset piece okay now so this is the second pair that i made this white pair and on this pair because i had our i just i made the green one straight out of the package so on this pair, I did do a couple of alterations. I added an inch and a half to the length. And you guys, I'm 5'3". So if you're taller than 5'3", double check the length on these. Um, after I was finished with these, I felt like the leg was still too wide. So I took an inch off of the inner leg on both sides. And I feel like that was pretty much it. Do I like these pants? I'm gonna show you a picture here. <laughs> Even I have to say, this doesn't look nice. Um, and I, I feel like this is probably because of the um, cotton fabric. I doubt that anybody will see that anyway because I pretty much always wear these things with tunics. I don't know. Um, I still think for my drop crotch pants, I still think I prefer that uh, my old Berta pattern that I've done a few times. I don't dislike these pants. They have some really cute details. Um, I just, I probably won't make them again. I don't need more than two. All right, so there's my rundown on the Juliet pants. Again, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, as I said before, next week we're going to be talking about leggings. Um, and I have a lot of information for you in that video. So that is it for me this week. Until next week, I wish you all happy sewing.